This is geography for class six. We are continuing with the chapter major landforms, and this is the subtopic minor landforms, which deals with peninsula, isthmus, island, and submarine relief. Please be attentive. In this picture that we have in front of our screen, you can see two images. One is that of Italy, and the other one is of the Deccan Peninsula. In both images, we have one thing in common. We have a landmass that is jutting out of the mainland and it is surrounded by water on three sides. In the Italian peninsula, we have the Adriatic and the Mediterranean seas, while in the Indian peninsula, we have the Bay of Bengal, the Indian Ocean and the Arabian Sea, which surrounds the water, uh, which surrounds the landform on three sides. On one side, however, the landmass is connected to this peninsula. A peninsula, children, is, as you already know, a landmass that is surrounded by water on three sides. It comes from two words, penne and insula. Penne means almost and insula means island. So the definition is it is almost an island. It is a piece of land that is entirely surrounded by water on three sides, but is connected to the mainland on one side. Peninsulas can be very small, sometimes only large enough for a lighthouse maybe, and sometimes they can be very, very big. It may be a part of a country or an entire country by itself, and they are found in every continent. Examples. Italian Peninsula and the Deccan Peninsula. The next landform we are going to do is an isthmus. The image you can see in front of you is that of an isthmus, which is connecting an island with a larger landmass. The word isthmus comes from the word isthmus itself, which means neck. When you look at this image, you will see that there is an island in the center and it is connected to the bigger landmass by something which looks like a neck. All right, it is slender and it connects both the landmasses and it separates the water bodies. This kind of a feature that connects two larger landmasses and separates two bodies of water is formed as waves and tides slowly builds up a sandbar to create a permanent link between a coastal island the one in the center and the mainland, the one at the bottom. This connection of the isthmus enables people to easily cross over and go to the island. All right, so it also, uh, this kind of an island is also called a tide island, T-I-E-D, tide, because it seems to be tied to the mainland with the help of an isthmus. In the background to what the to the right up you can see the isthmus of panama it links north america to south america the third feature we are dealing with is an island an island children as you already know is a body of land surrounded by water now the question may arise why are continents not called an island for a very basic and a very simple reason, it is because an island is much smaller than a continent. The largest island we have is Greenland. It is three times smaller than Australia. Therefore, Australia is a continent, whereas Greenland is the largest island. In one side of this image, you can see the island and on the other side, you can see a group of islands. A group of islands like this is called an archipelago. So, uh, so children, islands can be big and they can be small. They can be found in rivers, lakes, seas, and oceans. They vary greatly in size, climate, and the kinds of organisms that inhabit them. If it's hot, you may have a different kind of 
organisms if it is cold something else may be there if it is in the tropical regions we'll have a different type of animal life and uh, plant life and if it is in the arctic region then you'll have a different variety islands can be natural man-made and even made out of corals natural islands are of course uh, through plate tectonic movements um, or supposing a certain area gets submerged and only the middle part remains over the uh, over the water that is a natural island then a man-made island is usually made by vacuuming up sand from the seafloor in some place and then depositing it at the spot where you want to build the island if you put down enough sand in a shallow enough sea you will end up with a pile of st uh, sand that sticks out above water this forms an island and of course there are other kinds of islands like the coral islands these are made when free swimming coral larvae attack sorry attach themselves to the submerged rocks or other hard surfaces along the edges of islands or continents wherever they have plenty of food and it is warm enough not hot not cold and as the corals uh, coral larva die their skeleton remains behind and the corals grow and expand thus forming islands examples are sri lanka and greenland now we come to the last feature that is the submarine relief feature it is the fourth feature in our minor landforms when we think of the word submarine an image instantly comes to our mind of a ship that travels underwater the word submarine itself means to exist below the water body okay so a submarine just means something which is underwater as you have already learned in class we do not have a separate land mass and a water mass okay we have discussed it in class and you have learned that the land continues under the water and it forms different features this land which continues under the water is the submarine uh, relief that we are discussing right now there is no clear or well defined line separating oceans from land right here in this image you can see that this is the land and here is the beach and here is the shoreline till where the water approaches the land but even below this the land still stretches and it forms different uh, features yes so this is what we are going to discuss continents slope seawards from the coast to a point where the slope becomes very very steep okay this shallow you can see it's very shallow this shallow submerged extension of the continent is called the continental shelf this continental shelf is a source of fish minerals sand gravel petroleum natural gas etc people mine in these areas for all these things then further we have submarine canyons out here okay these are submarine canyons so these canyons are steep sided valleys cut into the floor of the seas they are very very similar to the gorges if you remember gorges are features which are found in the continents they are made uh, by the uh, cutting of swift flowing waters okay but you have the same features on in the sea also and they are called canyons now this continuously sloping portion of the continental margin which goes down deep down to the sea floor of the abyssal plain we have plains here in the sea also the abyssal plain so these kinds of st steep sloping sides are called the continental slope below that we have the abyssal plain which is extremely flat okay 
and we have mountains. Can you see the mountains here? Yes. So these are the various mountains that are found um, on the floor of the seas. They are not called mountains. They are called ridges. All right. And when a ridge rises out of the water, they form an island. And of course, we have oceanic mountains and their valleys too. So the valley that is formed, which are very, very deep, these valleys are called your ocean trenches.